Lord Mayor, <coughs> Ambassador, Ministers, ladies and gentlemen, I'm honoured to be here this evening, particularly in the presence of survivors and families of those who survived the Holocaust and those who did not. And I want to thank the Holocaust Education Trust Ireland for the kind invitation to speak to you. This isn't my first time to attend the ceremony, uh, but it is my first as Taoiseach, and I'm very pleased to do so. I want to acknowledge both the Office of the Lord Mayor of Dublin and the Government's Department of Justice and Equality, who support this event every year. Why do we remember? We remember because the horrors of the Holocaust, the Shoah, are seared on our consciousness, and we come together to affirm that we will never forget. We remember because it is a means of showing our solidarity and sharing our determination to honour the men, women and children who perished. And above all, we remember, lest it happen again. The former Ireland professor of poetry, Harry Clifton, has written movingly about the six million people who were about to be exterminated in what he calls the real apocalypse. He describes the gas chambers, the steam rooms, the bathhouse stink, and reaches the profound conclusion in his words, as the people of the book undress themselves, I learned at last how to think. And remembering and studying events such as the Holocaust force us all to think. Due to the work of international scholars and national organizations like the Trust, we are able to honor the dead by remembering their lives and learning about what happened to them. We remember people like Eddie Steinberg, who grew up and lived in Portobello in Dublin, uh, not too far from here, who moved to the continent after her marriage. She was forced to go on the run with her husband and their ch young child, Leon, and she and her family were arrested in 1942 and sent to Auschwitz, where they perished. Her story has been described by an Irish writer as a single tear in a veritable ocean of pain and suffering. So I'm delighted that the Irish Jewish Museum has erected a memorial to Etty and her son, both Irish citizens, who shared a humanity and a faith with millions of other citizens of Europe and around the world. I'm also greatly encouraged and enthused by the success of programmes run by the Trust as part of their effort to spread education about the Holocaust, especially the Crocus Project. That introduces young people to the subject of the Holocaust and raises awareness about the dangers of racism, discrimination, prejudice, and hatred. By planting yellow crocus bulbs, evoking the yellow star of David, which Jewish people were forced to wear under Nazi rule, school children remember and learn about the 1.5 million Jewish children who perished in the Holocaust and the thousands of other children who were also victims of Nazi atrocities. We remember, of course, others who were taken to the death camps, gay men and lesbians, Roma, Jehovah's Witnesses, mixed race children who were sterilized and people seen as subhuman by the Nazis. The story of our state, the Irish state, during this period was rather a mixed one. The Taoiseach at the time, Eamon de Valera, should be commended for explicitly recognizing the Jewish congregations in the new constitution despite some criticism and opposition at the time. And that was a courageous stand to take during a particularly dark period of European history. And we know he personally intervened to try to help refugees, often against the objections and obstacles of his own civil servants. However, the truth is that we as a state could have and should have done more. One of the preeminent scholars of the Holocaust, Raoul Hilberg, has written about the catastrophe in terms of the perpetrators, the victims, and the bystanders. And I wonder if we also need to take a similar approach when facing the moral crises of the present. And the first step to understanding what happened in the 1930s is to rec recognize how it didn't happen overnight. Long before people lost their lives, Jewish people were first stripped of their social life, their right to participate in the economy, free speech, free association. The countries they lived in were occupied, their homes taken, daily life was restricted, 
and they were corralled into ghettos. They were excluded and silenced before they were exterminated. And we need to understand as well how they became victims so we can intervene when others are treated in the same way. And we also need to recognise when we are the bystanders because the moral quandary of the bystander is ever present. And the most difficult thing, of course, is to try to understand the perpetrators, why they did what they did and behaved as they did. And I think it's only if we understand those who commit atrocities that we have a better chance of stopping them from happening again. So we must use the memory of what happened during that period to ensure a similar event does not befall humanity again. The threat of terror in today's world understandably causes people to be afraid. And that fear can cause people to look for someone or some group to blame. So we must conquer fear so that it does not open the door to racism, nationalism or prejudice. Today in Ireland we offer welcome on our shores to refugees from war-torn regions such as Syria. And we also extend our support outward through development and humanitarian assistance and through the service abroad of our peacekeepers among our defence forces. Former President Mary Robinson opined that today's human rights violations are the causes of tomorrow's conflicts. And this year, as you know, marks the 70th anniversary of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. This milestone document set out for the first time that fundamental human rights were to be universally protected. It was drafted as a response to the horrors of the Second World War and an expression of the will of our international community to make sure that such atrocities would be prevented in future. I want to conclude once again by saying how humbled I am to be in the presence today of survivors and their families. Today reminds us of the importance of educating ourselves about the Holocaust and also allows us to reaffirm our shared principle that hatred and prejudice should have no hold in our country or anywhere in the world. The great Irish writer Samuel Beckett joined the resistance in Paris in 1941. He was profoundly influenced by the Holocaust and all that he saw in that period. After the war, he volunteered with the Red Cross and wrote about how he had discovered a humanity in ruins. And to me, that's what the Holocaust represents, humanity in ruins, an act without conscience. And with each generation, we work to rebuild and repair what was destroyed, but we can never recover what was lost and those who were lost. All we can do is share a warning from history and send a message of hope that will resonate for all time. And we do that tonight. Thank you.